My next guest, Tracy, is married and has a two-year-old daughter. But as an only child, she has the sole responsibility for her mother. Tracy, who lives in Los Angeles, says she's worried about her 70-year-old mother who lives in Hawaii. But Carolyn says she's not ready to leave paradise just yet. Growing up, my mother and I were inseparable. We're not like mother and daughter, we're like sisters. Hello. Hi. My day would not be complete if I didn't talk with Tracy. She is my heart. Watching my mother age is very difficult. I'm worried about the next chapter in her life. I am so set on keeping my independence. I am way too young to even consider assisted living at this point. About 15 years ago, my mom got extremely ill. I think that's when the aging process began real for me. At this time, I don't feel that I have any health issues. I work, I play, I do everything. Being the only child, I am the only one that's responsible for my mother. I don't want to be a burden to anybody. Oh, she's scared. They're scared. I'm concerned with caring for children as well as taking care of my mother. My greatest fear is that I won't be able to provide for my mother the way she provided for me. Well, Tracy and Carolyn are joining me along with our very good friend, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer, Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall. So thank you for being here. Now, uh, Tracy, Carolyn appears to be doing pretty well in Hawaii. What would make you feel better about your mom's living situation? I think it would make me feel better. She lives closer to my family. It's, it's a challenge to care for my family and then be concerned about my mom. Do you understand Tracy's concerns about you? And would you consider leaving Hawaii? I really do understand um, her worrying about me. But right now, I'm in very nice health. And I'm very, very independent. And it would be quite emotional for me to leave Hawaii. So Dr. Frieda, many people worry about their parents aging in the right place. Uh, so what should these guys be considering when making the decision to stay in place or to move? You know, this is a very personal um, conversation as Tracy and Carolyn have discovered. And as I know, because I've had this conversation um, over time with my father and his wife, my, my dad's gonna be 100 in the fall. Yeah. So, but there are so many things to take into consideration. Just as an example, 80% of adults 65 and older are managing at least one health condition. 68% two or more. So just that leaves you with all of these questions. You know, can my parent manage their prescriptions? Can they make it back and forth to their doctor's appointment? What if an emergency happens? Is there someone close that can help? What are some of the warning signs that your parent might not be able to take care of themselves? Well, and there's some physical warning signs, noticeable weight loss or poor hygiene. Mm -hmm. Those are things that might suggest either a physical or cognitive problem. And then you can notice if someone has black and blue marks or bruises, maybe they've been having falls or are having a difficult time moving around. And the physical environment can also send up some red flags. So a home or a yard that's unkempt, mail that's unopened, prescriptions unfilled. So if you notice these warning signs, what's the next step? So it can be really difficult. Honest conversation with your parent is really key. And the earlier, the better. And you want to go into that conversation with any observations that you've had, as well as ideas about care needs and options for meeting those needs. What might some of those options mm -hmm. be? Because there are different choices that people have. There are a range of options. I mean, staying at home is, of course, one. Mm -hmm. And um, if need be, staying at home with assistance. So assistance in the form of a family member, or a caregiver, at-home services like meal delivery, cleaning services. And there's a lot of uh, smart home technology now that really makes it more accessible for people to age um, at home. And then there's another range of options, adult day service centers. Uh, there are also uh, senior living communities, and I, I want to underscore communities, that offer a range of care options. And of course, there are nursing homes if the level of care is required. If you want to visit together, if you can, um, ask loads of questions. I think it's great that Carolyn and Tracy are having these discussions now while you can still 
take care of yourself and you're in a position to make those decisions. That makes a huge difference. So what would you suggest when agent parents are so far away like these two? First of all, with your mother's agreement, you can become the primary contact with her doctor and caregivers, uh, share medical information about um, her conditions and any medications that she may be taking. It's also really important to exchange information with people that are close to your mom and close by your mom so that they know how to reach you and also you know how to reach them. Yeah, and Tracy, it's important that you make time for your own health and talk about your caregiving challenges with friends, colleagues, and a support group. We have lots of information on uh, caregiving uh, care and taking care of yourself as a caregiver, as well as ways to age well on getold.com. I don't know about this name, but it's Get Old. <laughs> getold.com. There's great resources there, even though it's getold.com. There are great resources there, so I really recommend you check it out. I want to thank all of my guests today, especially Dr. Frida Lewis Hall.